Hey there, thanks for joining me today and I will be talking to you about a um, core workout program. So this is the complete exercise, nutrition and lifestyle program to getting that perfect midsection. And my name is Jose Villablanca and I'm a personal trainer. I've been doing this since 2007 and I'm also a holistic lifestyle coach. So what that means is I look into your lifestyle holistically and um, see where we can make improvements so you can see more fitness results. So what you can do outside of the gym will translate in the gym and in your body. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is a common myth, which is spot reduction. So what is spot reduction? So spot reducing the effort to exercise one part of the body in hopes of reducing the amount of fat stored in that area. What that means is um, the more crunches you do, and that means that you'll burn more fat in your belly. See that typo there? I just noticed that. Sorry. <laughs> so basically what that means is um, it doesn't mean that the more crunches that you, do, that you do, the more fat you'll burn around your belly. Or the more tricep extensions you do, the more fat you'll burn um, at your around your arms. So especially the back arms because that's where the triceps are. Um, a lot of people still think that that holds true. Now, yes, you do feel that burn, but that's um, the burning sensation or um, a lactic acid buildup to where you're working the muscles. So if you're feeling that burn in your, your midsection, that's just, you know, your abs, which is underneath um, a layer of fat burning because of the lactic acid buildup. Or if you're doing tricep extensions um, and you feel that burning sensation at the back of your arms, you're not burning fat tissue. You're building lactic acid around the muscles they're working so the triceps all right so that is an absolute myth next thing i want to talk to you about is nutrition so I've, i don't know if you've heard of the saying um abs are not built in the gym they're built in the kitchen i truly believe that that is partially true <laughs> so what that means is um you definitely need to eat right because that is your fuel you want to think of food as fuel, not just, you know, as something that you need to do to get by throughout the day. And the right types of fuel will definitely get you working harder, okay? Um, if you feed a Ferrari diesel, it won't, it won't run, right? Um, but the body is really that good that it would use um, not, you know, non-optimal food and change it so that you could use it for energy, although it is very taxing to your body. A car can't do that. So you really need to treat your vehicle of life, which is your body, um, as much uh, as 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 good as possible. You have to respect it. So here, the first bullet point: eating right for a metabolic type. What does that mean? Well, you could look up the metabolic typing diet. Um, I follow that, and I I tell my clients to follow this as well. What that means is um, every person eats differently. So um, you need to. Some people do good at the Atkins diet. And some people don't. Some people do good with the Paleo diet, and some people don't. What that means is how we look differently from the outside is also how we look. Um, we're very different inside as well in our in our digestive system. So not everyone does well with a high carb diet. Not everyone does well with a high high fat diet. Not everyone does well with a high protein diet or low of each. Okay. So you need to find out your meta your metabolic type and eat the right way that way. So that's one thing that we look at. The next thing is you are what you eat. So you want to make sure that you're eating the right types of food. Um, going back into the stuff I was saying earlier, you want to treat food like fuel. So when you eat the right types of fuel, you'll have enough energy to work out. And not only that, but you'll stop storing fat. And you can definitely do that also is when you're eating right. A lot of people might be eating the right stuff, but they're not eating frequently enough. So I would say you shouldn't be eating no longer than every four hours. By the time you're, you know, after four hours, you're going to feel hungry, you're going to overeat. So you never want to eat when you're hungry because you will always eat more than what is required. That's why sometimes you feel that food coma. I'm doing an air quote right now. <laughs> yes, um, that's because it takes about 20 minutes once you start, um, once you swallow your food, it takes about 20 minutes before your body actually feels that you're eating something. So, you know, think about how long it actually takes you to eat. Some people, you know, it takes them 10 minutes, which means 10 minutes later, that's when they actually, their body actually feels that they've been eating. But by that point, it's too late, right? Because they ate, they stuffed their face so much. Now, are you one of those people? Hopefully not. So that's why you need to eat every four hours. Um, what you're digesting. So a lot of people eat right, and they eat at the right times, but they actually don't know, and they're not listening to their body, and they're not seeing the cues 
that um, they're not actually digesting the food that they're eating. So which is really a waste of your time and money. You're going out to buy the right types of food, spending high, you know, a lot of money for high quality foods, and you're eating at the right times. You know, making carving out time to make to eat at the right peak times, and you're exercising too, but you may not know that you're not actually digesting. And now this is one thing that a lot of people uh, neglect because they just don't know, right? You don't know what you don't know. So you really need to look at uh, the signals that if you're actually digesting the food or not. And uh, one signal is actually abdominal bloating. So talking about that into getting a flatter midsection, when you eat the right types of food, when you're avoiding all the food intolerances or allergies that you have, you won't have abdominal bloating. Think about it. When you eat certain types of food, you start to notice that you're you start to bloat. Same thing with the ab abdominals. It won't it will never be flat if you keep eating the wrong foods. The next thing that we want to look into is rest, recovery, and exercise program. So earlier I was just talking about nutrition. Now um, you you need to look into how do you put a program together. Are you gonna have a full body workout? That's usually for beginners or someone who wants to restart. Has been fit but has always been doing a split program or a two-day split, or a three-day split, or a compound exercise program. So you, you, it, full body programs are not always for beginners. But this is um, every month, every four weeks, four to six weeks, really, you should be changing your workout program. So the question is, are you doing this for your certain goals, right? Um, next thing you need to look into is the frequency per week. How many times are you working your abs per week? And are you pairing it up with an upper body day, lower body day, or accessory day? You need to look into the intensity as well. How hard you're working out. Not every single workout can be very intense because that's very taxing. Now, stress or sorry, working out is a type of stress, but it's a good stress, all right. But working out too hard or overtraining is a distress, which isn't good for you. So a lot of people don't see results. They'll amp up their workouts. They'll work out really hard, but then you're not recovering enough and you're not having enough time between workouts which could lead to overtraining and injury. So that's why you also need to look into your rest between workouts. Okay, So how long are you working out or taking a break between um, workouts for the abs? Not just that but rest between muscle groups. Okay, So again if you're doing a split program or a full body program there's always a rest period for each muscle group because you actually build muscle, lean tissue muscle, don't worry ladies if you don't want to get bulky, but you build lean tissue muscle, muscle tissue, sorry, um, during your rest period. You stimulate your muscles to grow, you stimulate your fat to burn as you work out, but during the rest period, that's when uh, your body makes the changes, okay? And another thing you want to look into is a lot of people do this wrong, um, well, just because they don't know any better, but the planes of motion. So there are three planes of motion. There's the sagittal, which is um, anything like crunches. Frontal, which is like side bends, side planks, um, uh, basically to work the obliques. And the third plane of motion, and this goes for any type of muscle group, okay? That's the uh, transverse, okay? So that goes with um, wood chops, kneeling wood chops, um, anything that has a rotational movement to it. So those are the three planes of motion. Most people always stick to, or not always, but they usually stick to sagittal plane just because that's how most machines are built. Um, that's what most people know how to exercise. So talking about the types of core exercises, um, there is the rotation, which is in the transverse plane. Um, and there's the anti-rotation, which means just holding the position, fighting against gravity. Um, and I'll give you a few examples later. Um, there's planks, you know, and, there are crunches that you can do. So there are two types of crunches that you can do. So uh, the normal crunches would be, um, so this is the pelvis to shoulder crunches, which is leg raises. So basically you're bringing the pelvis to your shoulders. So one part of your body is fixed while the other is moving. And the normal um, crunches that we usually know is the shoulders to pelvis. So your, your legs are stable and you bring your shoulders to your pelvis or your, your lower body area, right? Now, the rotational exercises. Here are some examples of them. The first would be wood chops, which I explained earlier. Um, reverse wood chops. There's side to side wood chops as well. And all these different exercises will be in another program that we'll have. So you, hopefully you will subscribe to that, just so you know how to use each exercise. So there, there are different stances for the wood chops as well. And this goes for all three wood chops above. So that's the kneeling. There's also the uh, half kneeling position. And um, 
The next exercise is the hanging knee circles. So that's another um, rotational exercise, but this time it's at the lower body that's rotating. Uh, medicine ball rotational throws is another example. And going back to the lower body rotations would be the Russian twists as well. And there are also other, there's a combination of um, anti-rotation and rotation, which is like an example here, side plank with contralateral knee tucks, okay? So the next slide, sorry, the next uh, exercise is anti-rotation, which is on the next slide. There you go. So um, anti-rotation is resisting gravity, um, holding a position. A plank is actually a form of um, anti-rotation, which I'll get into later. So static hold wood shot. Um, if you're doing cable wood chops, um, holding the weight against gravity through your core is an anti-rotation. Another position is just static hold reverse wood chops. And then the third would be a static hold side wood chops, okay? And again, there are different stances as well, which is uh, kneeling, half kneeling. You could even be um, like seated kneeling, kind of. So you're really low or you're basically your hips are below or just right above your knees. So it's not like a, a complete kneel where you're upright. <clears throat> and then there are also two or three point planks. So again, that is an anti-rotation. You're holding a plank position. If you say, just do a regular plank on your forearms and you lift one leg up and you're trying to resist your pelvis from twisting, that is an anti-rotation. You can also make it harder by just having two points of contact to the mat. So lifting the, op the uh, opposing uh, arm, so contralaterally. In other words, uh, say for example, lifting your right arm and your left leg and holding that plank. That is a really hard anti-rotation. There's also uh, kneeling side bends and a really good one but very um, underestimated is the dog bird. So there are different variations to that as well. Next one would be the planks. So there are different types of planks. As you know, high plank, low plank. There's also two-point plank, which I mentioned earlier. There are three-point planks as well. Um, there's also like plank reach tuck, so this is a combination of a plank with a crunch. Um, a dead bug is a type of plank, but this time you're laying on your back. And then the next type of exercise or movement for the core is crunches. So again, I showed you that earlier. Crunches is bringing the shoulders to your um, lower body. Now another type of crunches is bringing your legs to your upper body, which is leg raises. So that's the pelvis to the shoulders this time. Um, bicycles is another type of crunch which is using um, the opposite sides and opposite limbs as well. Um, Swiss ball crunches, so you can do crunches with a Swiss ball which gives you more range of motion as opposed to laying on your back so you just lay flat. This one extends you even more which means you have more range of motion to work your abdominals. And then you can also do BOSU crunches if you don't have great stability because the BOSU ball, half of it, the other side is flat, so you put that flat surface against the floor, which makes it more stable compared to a Swiss ball. So that is pretty much it. So those are the different ways of how to get a flat midsection and to getting a toned um, core. Basically, you need to look into nutrition, you need to look into the types of exercises, you need to look into the program design, and you need to look into your lifestyle how you could put that together. So if this is something you'd be interested in, please uh, give me a ring, call me, email me, and I will um, direct you to some programs that I have online that you can do on your own. And there will definitely be some Q&As um, if you have any questions for me. Thanks for listening. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.